Praise the Lord, my dear friends, and a very happy feast of our Blessed Mother. We are on the fourth day of our reflection on the qualities of our Blessed Mother found in John chapter 2. As we know, there are a lot more qualities that we can talk about. However, we shall see a few more qualities that we see in this chapter. Let us go to verse 10. Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. See here, the steward of the banquet, after tasting the wine that Jesus made out of water, confirmed that this wine is of a superior quality. Okay, we can say that the wine that Jesus provided would be the best. But another point we can understand here, if that steward was able to immediately notice the difference between the quality of the wine that was provided earlier and the wine that is available now, that would mean the wine that was provided earlier was not of a very good quality. It might have been good, but not of a very superior quality. And we know in a function like a marriage, everyone would like to provide the best, right? And if that family provided the wine of inferior quality, that would mean that family might have been economically not very sound. They just provided the best they could. And if that family were not economically stable or economically very well-to-do, our Blessed Mother could not expect much in return for the services that she provided in that family. All the helps that she might have done in that family in serving or working together with all of them. Or now for the intercession that she made with her own son and making the wine available through her intercession. She could not have expected anything in return from that family. But yet, our Blessed Mother was willing to do that. We can also be like that. We can also be willing to offer our helping hand even when we know that we can't expect much in return from those individuals whom we help. Do we see similar quality in Jesus as well? Of course. Jesus went around healing, raising the dead, teaching, preaching, without expecting anything in return, right? We don't see him expecting anything in return. And he offered not just some helps alone. He offered his own very body and blood for our sake. And he said, there is no greater love than giving up one's own life for his friend. And he did that. And was he doing all these, expecting something in return from us? Yeah, probably he was expecting maybe our love in return. But was he expecting anything like we expect from individuals when we do some help for them? I don't think so. And the last quality that we can talk about today that we see in our Blessed Mother in John chapter 2 is interesting. See, after the water was made into wine and it was distributed, we don't see our Blessed Mother in the scene anymore. It was through her instrumentality that this miracle happened. But we don't see her anywhere in the scene after that. Our mother could have just uh, walked around among the guests and asked them, hey, how is the quality of the wine? Is it okay? Is it good? Ah, okay, my son, my son made it. But she was not looking for any human confirmation. What do we see in Jesus? Uh, we know when Jesus multiplied the bread. We have it in uh, Matthew chapter 14 verses 13 onwards. Jesus multiplying the bread and feeding the 5,000. Here, when Jesus took the few loaves of bread, he made the prayer and gave to the disciples to distribute. And even after it was being distributed, it was the disciples who collected the leftovers back. Jesus did not go around asking the individuals, so how is the bread? Was it okay? Was it soft? Was it tasty? Because if we go around asking, then of course the uh, people would have told Jesus, Jesus, thank you so much. This is the best. 
and so on but he was not interested exactly the same thing we see in uh, chapter 15 verses 32 onwards feeding the 4000 jesus took the loaf of bread and gave thanks and gave to the disciples to distribute of course when we see the miracle of multiplication of the bread in john chapter 6 it is mentioned jesus took the loaves of bread gave thanks and distributed to them of course it is mentioned as jesus distributed but i think this is little more uh, clear and detailed jesus gave to the disciples and the disciples distributed and interestingly in john chapter 6 after uh, the people had their fill they wanted to make jesus their king and when jesus noticed that people wanted to make him king what did he do he immediately sent the disciples away and went to the mountain to pray jesus too needed confirmation but not human confirmation but the confirmation from his heavenly father he wanted to be united with his father not that we don't need human confirmation and encouragement and so on we all need that but the consolation and the encouragement that we really require comes when we are united with our heavenly father united with jesus himself and jesus knew that very well and jesus knew when there is a lot of appreciation there he had to spend time longer with the father and at that moment even the disciples could have been a distraction so he sent the disciples away and went to the mountain to pray see how jesus carefully planned and uh, arranged his time of prayer and that's what we see in our blessed mother as well probably after the miracle our blessed mother might have also been uh, silently praying somewhere thanking god in any case we don't see her anywhere in the scene so my dear friends as we celebrate the feast of our blessed mother let's also once again go through all these qualities that we heard in the past few days and see which are the qualities that we can imbibe which are the qualities that we can begin to practice from today and offer that as a small birthday present to our blessed mother let's conclude with a hail mary hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen may god bless each one of us